Hey soapy folks, this is Kevin with Divinely Design and we have a soap experiment. I haven't done one in a while and um, I've been thinking about doing this one for a little while but I needed a special piece of equipment um, so I finally got around to getting that and that is a pH meter. So the experiment I would like to do is testing weight loss and change in pH for a soap over time. Um, there are plenty of, if you go on the soap forums out there on Facebook and um, you, you listen to the new soap makers and they will say, well, how long do I have to cure my soap? And a very sort of common um, a response is that, you know, for cold process, you need to cure it for four to six weeks. Um, and when asked why that is, um, the explanation is that, well, it will help your bar um, lose water so it becomes harder, and it will become quote-unquote milder. Now, I'm not sure what milder means. It seems to hint at there is a change in pH over time, but... Um, in Kevin Dunn's book, uh, Scientific Soap Making, uh, we know that the saponification process, the majority of it, something like 90% of it, happens within the first 24 hours. The remainder usually is finished within 48 hours. Now, there's, there's lots of variables in there, right? It could, it, you know, could depend on your formula, the temperature your soap is in, the humidity, um, additives, yada, 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 right? There could be a ton of variables in there. But in general, the saponification happens, the majority of it in the first 24 hours, and then, you know, the rest of it within that next 24 hours. So by 48 hours, it should all be completed or roughly very completed. So to me, that means that we shouldn't have much of a change in pH after those first 48 hours. So I'm not really sure what milder means. I get that it will become a harder bar as the water you know, evaporates out of the soap. Um, that will make it last longer in the shower. Um, but other than that, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to quantify milder, right? Okay, so we, I thought I would try and look at this and just take a step back and say, well, maybe the pH does change. Let's take a look at that. So I have this very basic recipe soap that I've made. Um, has no fragrance in it. It does have a little color because I, I actually made some embeds for another project and I threw the rest of the color that's in here. But there's no fragrance. And it's what a very I simple intend recipe, to do for this experiment is I have three environments I'm going to keep the soap in. One, my control is just going to sit out on the counter with nothing else. Just sit there like I normally do when I cut a soap. I just usually put it on my counter, put it downstairs in my drying rack, wherever it is, and just sit out there in the air in my normal temperature and humidity here in Philadelphia. The second bar I'm going to put into a Ziploc bag and close it up and keep it closed. And the third bar I'm going to put in a dehydrator. Here I have the Nesco American Harvest Food Dehydrator and Jerky Maker. I'm going to put it on its lowest setting and put a bar of soap in there and let it sit in there. Now, I have two bars for each environment. The one bar is going to be my one that I weigh. So I'm going to weigh it every single day, at least for the first week, and then... After that, I may um, change it up. I might not weigh it every day. I may weigh it every couple days, or I may switch to every week. I'm not really sure. But we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> so, so the one bar will simply be for weighing purposes. The other one I'm going to use to measure the pH. 
And in order to measure the pH, I'm going to have to take off some of the, the bar. So I don't want that one involved in the weight at all. One bar is simply going to be untouched except to weigh it. The other one I'm going to have to chop up and uh, take pieces of it to um, measure to make uh, the pH solution. Um, the one that I put in the bag, I'm going to put in the bag and then weigh so I don't ever have to open the bag again. The one that's in the bag for the pH, I am going to have to open the bag to sort of take out some of the soap in order to make the pH solution. So I can't really control that. But the other one for weight purposes, I'm just going to leave in the bag and, and weigh it with the bag. And I'll collect the data and then we'll look at over time, how does the weight and the pH change um, for some cold process soap, okay? All right, so um, uh, stick around. I, there should be uh, uh, some results or I think I have some video where I'm gonna go over a little bit of the detail process here of how I'm weighing and measuring the pH in case you're interested in sort of uh, the experiment itself, okay? Okay, so just a little bit about the experiment and how I kind of did some of the things. I used this little jeweler's scale that um, I got from um, Amazon, I believe I purchased it from. But I weighed the bars um, uh, just on the scale itself. To do the pH testing, it was a little bit more involved. So I actually used these sort of large uh, straws to take kind of like core samples of the soap itself. So I would use the straw, take out kind of a, a middle piece of it so I wasn't just getting, you know, just the ends or whatever. And then I would weigh those out um, on my little jeweler's scale. Uh, and I would use uh, distilled water uh, along with the soap pieces. So I would measure out, um, I made a 10% uh, soap solution every time. So I had 27 grams of water and 3 grams of the soap itself and then I used the pH meter uh, once that soap was dissolved into the water to make my 10% solution I would use the pH meter to measure the pH. Okay, so let's take a look at the data. So first let's take a look at the weight information. So I um, weighed each of those soaps for a total of six weeks. And here you can see the graph of the progression of the change in weight. Now, they all weighed a little different when we started out. Um, so I'll take a look at the percentage of change in just a second. But you can see here that obviously at the very top, the, the bagged one, the one that stayed in the bag, lost almost no weight whatsoever, um, which is not surprising. Um, for the, the control, the one that just sat on the counter and the dehydrator, they have very similar looking curves. So you can see that they're, you know, in the first couple of days, there's kind of this big drop in weight. Um, and then it starts to um, even out, although they still continue to lose weight, even through the entire six week period, they continued to lose weight. Now, definitely the dehydrator one um, lost more weight um, over that time and lost it a little bit more quickly. So not super surprising, I don't think at all. Let's take a look at the numbers themselves. So you can see that each of them started um, just a little bit different in terms of their starting weight. Um, if we look at the control one, the one that just sat on the counter, um, it lost a total of 0.7 ounces or almost 20 grams, which uh, was a reduction in 40 by 14.8% um, of its weight over that six week period. Um, the bagged one, obviously not very surprising, barely lost any weight, so it had a reduction in 1% of its uh, weight loss. And the dehydrator um, did lose uh, the most, uh, so it lost uh, in total 24.75 grams or 0.87 ounces. Um, and uh, so for a percentage wise, 19.3%. So, I, you know, not a big surprise here, I don't think. The one in the dehydrator lost the most weight. It lost it quicker than the others. Um, 
and uh, you know it was still losing weight even at the six week period now they had really stopped losing a lot of weight um probably you know i don't know for around the four or five week mark um although they were still continuing to lose weight it was pretty small amounts it was you know a gram or so so grams are very small units of measure um, but it, it was continuing to lose weight um, so let's take a look at the pH now this was probably the one I was most interested in I mean the weight change seemed fairly obvious to me but again going back to the original concept for this experiment was you know people will say well soaps as they cure they get milder quote, sort of quote unquote milder but but no one really ever defines what that means and the assumption being that it, it probably meant a change in pH but we know that the majority of the saponification reaction happens in those first one or two days so as we looked at this here's the graph for the change in pH now I had to add a trend line uh, so that you could see the lines here so that's why you see sort of different different lines over here but uh, don't don't get all confused by that the the red is the bagged one the blue is the control and the green is the dehydrator one so uh, remember the blue the control one is the one that sat on the counter so for all three of them um, I mean they they all started at the same pH and then we see this huge drop in the first um, first three or four days here um, and then after that we see it continues to drop really um, over the next weeks now what I did was I measured the pH once per day during the first week and then I measured it once per week for the remaining six weeks um, so now you'll notice also that there are times when the pH um, and it happened for all three of them so this is a little interesting but they they dropped and then it sort of rebounded a little bit and came back up now what you know why would the pH go back up good question I don't know um, but I will say you know I don't have the most super sophisticated pH meter out there it is supposed to be accurate to um, one hundredth uh, of a, of a um, degree but um, you know it's it's this is in my kitchen and I was mixing uh, things just with you know my normal kitchenware so I wasn't in a laboratory setting so there probably is some amount of um, um, you know percentage of sort of error that happens here but but these are very small amounts I mean over here we're looking at you know um, the 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 um, the axis over here uh, is 0.5 um, of a pH here so we ended up with the dehydrator being the lowest pH and the the bagged and the control one being very similar if we look at the actual numbers here um, so they all started with the same pH um, that I measured the control the one that sat on the counter ended up with a 9.56 which the bagged one was exactly the same the dehydrator one ended up with a slightly lo lower pH 9.23 um, again, if we look at the sort of percentage change, which I think is probably um, a little bit more telling here, in, like in the weight. So for the bagged and the control, it was a difference of 21.8% change from beginning to end. And for the dehydrator, about 24.5%. So the biggest change that happened there. So there's definitely a change in pH that happens over time. Um, certainly the biggest change happens in those very first days, um, within the very first week. Um, but I mean, even within the first probably four or five days here. And then you can see for all of them that it starts to level out a lot after that, that initial big drop in the pH there. And then it continues to sort of change and, and get a little bit lower over the course of the weeks um, but both of them you know ended up being very close to each other I mean the difference between a pH of 9.56 and 9.23 for you know a human being to, is, is negligible like certainly nobody would ever be able to tell that in a soap and say oh clearly this pH of this soap is you know this this tiny amount higher or lower than this other soap here I mean for all intents and purposes these pHs are practically identical here um, so there is definitely a change that happens over time though 
uh, for that soap as it continues to cure. Now, the other piece I'd like to just mention quickly is what these soaps look like. So while the dehydrator did um, speed up the weight loss and um, create more weight loss and uh, a, a tiny bit lower of a pH for that soap, take a look at sort of what they ended up looking like after those six weeks. So on the left hand side, the control um, sort of just looks like a normal, con um, you know, uh, cold process soap. The one in the middle, the bagged one, the, the thing I find interesting is that middle section, um, it, it looks almost like um, it's a like a big glycerin river, um, but this, this soap continued to stay sort of very moist. Um, as I took it out of the bag here. I mean, it was practically unchanged, um, you know, from when I put it in the bag, although although clearly the pH does change still. But look at this last one, the dehydrator one. I mean, it's kind of a mess. Um, it's sort of shriveled and wrinkled and then developed significant amounts of ash all over the soap. So, you know, in terms of uh, cleaning up the soap, um, you know, this bar, the control bar, I might not do anything to it. I mean, it's, you know, it's not per it's not perfect looking, but certainly it's an okay looking bar of cold processed soap. But this dehydrator one here is sort of a mess. I mean, it, I think it would definitely need to be cleaned up uh, if you were going to sell that. So just as another sort of piece of information there in terms of using the dehydrator. Um, and that's and that's it. That's it, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Comments, questions, leave them below. Like, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube stuff. If you're interested in more of the science of soap making, I suggest the book Scientific Soap Making by Kevin Dunn. It's an excellent resource. I still use it to this day. That's it, everyone. Thanks so much. Have a great day.